Good morning to everybody out there. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. Bob the Canadian here with another Friday morning uh, English lesson. So today's topic is medicine and healthcare. In uh, Canada, at least, we refer to the entire medical world as the world of healthcare. Sorry, my computer's making noise here. Um, so today we're going to look at healthcare and medicine. I have to tell you uh, before I start though that I am not a doctor. I am not an expert on the medical field uh, or in the medical field, but I do know a few things because I've been to the doctor a lot and I've been to the hospital a lot in the last two years. I'll tell you a little more about that later. Anyways, welcome to everyone who is watching this lesson. Again, we're going to be talking about healthcare today uh, and medicine. Um, before we start though, first of all, if you're new here, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Uh, and secondly, again, like the other live streams, if you have a question, please ask using the form uh, over there in the chat or below in the chat. It takes you to a Google form. It's just a helpful me, a helpful way for me to, uh, to see the questions and answer them carefully. My plan today is to look at about five of my handouts and then stop and answer some questions. So again, welcome to everyone who's just joining us. You saw the first one, so let's get started. By the way, this is more than a vocabulary lesson. A few people have commented that the Friday morning lessons, the vocabulary is fairly easy, but this is meant to be a vocabulary lesson, but also a listening uh, practice lesson for you uh, to hear me speak English and to pronounce the words that I'm showing to you. And I also use some words and phrases along the way that I think are helpful. Just want to stop to say hi to everyone in the chat. Uh, I, again, I can't say hi to all of you by name uh, because there's so many of you now, but uh, thank you so much for joining uh, this live lesson on uh, healthcare and medicine. So we have doctor here. So in Canada, uh, doctor is the general term for someone that you go to see if you are feeling sick, uh, if you have been in an accident, uh, and maybe you've broken a bone. So uh, hopefully that hasn't happened to uh, any of you. Uh, or for any other reason, sometimes you have more serious illnesses. So you would go and see a doctor. Um, in English, there are a lot of different kinds of doctors. Um, generally, the first doctor you will see is called your family doctor. So I have a family doctor in my local town. That is the first doctor that I go to see whenever I have a question about my health or if my children need to see the doctor. So my wife, myself, and all of my children have the same doctor and that's our family doctor. When we go to see our family doctor, we usually, the first person we usually see is a nurse, which might surprise you, but in Canada, when you visit the doctor, um, generally the first person you meet is the nurse and she just kind of talks to you and asks you how you're feeling. Uh, after you've talked to the nurse, then usually the doctor comes in later. Um, so a nurse is similar to a doctor. A nurse is someone who works in the healthcare field. That's how we refer to it in English, the healthcare field. Um, a nurse has less training than a doctor um, and is maybe, I could say, less specialized, but a very good person at general care. So a nurse, uh, sometimes we would say, is skilled in the practical part of medicine. Nurses are really good at taking your temperature, uh, giving you needles. Uh, I don't like needles. Um, and then even diagnosing what is wrong. And we'll get to some of those words later. Um, but generally in Canada, um, a nurse has about three years of training, sometimes four or five years of training, whereas a doctor probably has closer to seven years of training, depending on their specialty. Um, so a nurse is another person who works in healthcare that uh, takes care of you. So again, if you have questions, I'll get to them in a bit. Again, hi to everyone who is here. Uh, in the chat, lots of people there. I see a few questions in the chat. Uh, make sure you do use that form to ask them. Uh, and then I'll go over a few, uh, about every five uh, handouts or so, we'll have a look at one. So a special kind of doctor 
is a surgeon. Um, so a surgeon is someone who actually operates on people. So a surgeon is skilled at, I don't like to say this, but at uh, cutting you open uh, <laughs> and fixing you uh, on the inside. So surgeons generally work in hospitals uh, and they work in operating rooms and they're just really, really good at, um, I guess, fixing people. Um, so they do things like heart surgery, uh, they do things like removing kidney stones. So surgeons are the doctors who are extremely skilled uh, at fixing you on the inside. Let's put it that way. They fix you on the inside. Um, there are many doctors, and in Canada we refer to them as specialists. So a family doctor uh, is known as a general practitioner. A family doctor is good at all different parts of medicine, but we also sometimes are sent to a specialist. So let's say I go to my family doctor and he listens to my heart and he says, oh, there's a problem here. You need to see a specialist. So I would then be sent to a cardiologist um, who is someone who is also a doctor, but they have specialized in um, treating heart patients and treating the heart. There are also cancer doctors. There are ear, nose, and throat doctors. So a specialist is um, another type of doctor who has specialized, which means they have studied more uh, in a certain area. Uh, again, hello to everyone who is watching. Uh, thank you so much for joining this live lesson on medicine. I know some of you watch this later uh, and you listen to it in the background and that's very cool as well. Um, we are just about to take some questions after I talk about one other person in medicine, and that is a paramedic. So a paramedic um, is someone who has a lot of medical training, and they drive or ride in an ambulance. Usually there's two paramedics in an ambulance. Um, I should put the ambulance up for a sec. So a paramedic is someone who is a first responder. So a first responder is one of the first people that arrives when there's been an accident or a fire or any other catastrophe. And paramedics have extensive medical training and their job is to treat people and then get them in the ambulance and get them to the hospital. So paramedics are very, very cool people. We'll look at that again in a sec. I'm gonna take a couple questions. Um, there's a few grammar questions here. Remember, we're gonna try and stay on topic today. Um, make sure your questions are questions about medicine. Um, Rami Salip says, what's the difference between doctor and dentist and is the dentist a doctor? So I don't know technically if a dentist is a doctor, but a dentist only takes care of your teeth. Okay, so if you have any problems with your teeth, if you need a tooth pulled, um, if you need a tooth fixed, you go to a dentist. Um, dentists do have a lot of medical training, uh, but they are not the same as a doctor. They're more of a specialist. They specialize in teeth. So that's the difference there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Yuri says, just a quick question here. Um, I would appreciate if you explain what's the difference between suffer from and suffer something. I've, I've met or I've heard both variants. So usually we say you're suffering from a cold. Oh, I'm just suffering from the flu right now. And we don't usually say to suffer something. Um, so if you're talking medically, you would suffer from something. That would be how it would go. Um, let's see here. This is one, Luis Alberto says, what's the specific term for stones in the kidney? We call them kidney stones, kidney stones. So I've had kidney stones about four times in my life. They hurt a lot. So kidney stones are um, in the back, uh, uh, in your back there's your kidney um, and it can really, really hurt when you have kidney stones. Not a nice thing to have. Um, Beata says, last question then we'll move on. Uh, what would you do to improve healthcare? Well, in Canada we have free healthcare. So the government, through our taxes, everyone has health care. So I would wish that every country in the world uh, would have that. That's how I would uh, improve health care. I think I would just say it'd be cool if everyone had free health care. 
Um, let's see here. John Lee, sorry, I know I said last question, but this is a good one. John Lee says, what do you call a male nurse? Is it the same? So it's just a nurse. So we have male and female nurses. Um, you can say male nurse, but generally we just say nurse. Um, the same with doctor. Uh, we don't say male doctor, female doctor. Um, you can ask, maybe you'll say to someone, um, oh, did you go, uh, is your doctor, uh, do you have a male or female doctor? But generally it's not important. Um, the gender of the person isn't important. Um, so we don't specify it, um, whether you have a male or female doctor. Uh, let's see here. Um, last question. I said that twice, didn't I? Um, there's a little spelling mistake in this one. Uh, Thales says, what's the difference between a doctor and a physician? We use the words interchangeably. They are the same. Um, there may be slight real differences, but generally we use the word doctor in English. So a paramedic is the person who drives the ambulance and helps you when you hurt yourself. So they drive the ambulance, or maybe they ride in the back of the ambulance. Um, they might also be in what we call an air ambulance. So sometimes uh, people have accidents in remote locations, or they need to get the people who were in the accident to the hospital quickly. So they might use an air ambulance, which is a helicopter. In Ontario, the air ambulances are orange. You can see it says orange here. This is not spelled correctly though. This is the name of the company. Um, but an air ambulance is used to get you to the hospital quickly. Um, I have never been in an air ambulance and I don't ever want to be uh, in an air ambulance. Well, you know what I mean, I think. Um, so there's a lot of places you can go. If you watched the lesson on buildings, we talked about medical centers and clinics. So a medical center is, um, in Canada, we don't always go straight to the hospital. Usually if we're having something that's happening health-wise, if we have a problem with our health, we go to a medical center or a clinic. This is the first place you would go to see a doctor. Um, when you get there, this is everyone's favorite place. Sometimes you have to sit in the waiting room. Um, so waiting rooms exist all over the place. Um, in every kind of um, place where people need to go. Uh, there's waiting rooms at the License Bureau, there's waiting rooms in hospitals, there's waiting rooms at the doctor's office or at the medical center. So you sit in the waiting room. Sometimes I'm worried when I'm sitting in the waiting room because you're sitting with all kinds of other sick people and I don't, I don't wanna get uh, whatever sickness they have. So. Um, the waiting room, oh, sorry, wrong thing I pasted there. Give me a sec here, people. I'm going too quickly and not thinking. So there's the form again. Um, when you go to a medical center or a clinic, eventually you uh, get called in from the waiting room. They come and call your name and you go to the doctor's office. Um, so the doctor's office is usually a small area where the doctor can examine you. Uh, can have a look at, so let's say you have a sore throat, they might look down your throat, they might look in your ears, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you would go to a doctor's office. We also, of course, have hospitals. So hospitals are there for more serious things. So if I had a cold or flu, I actually saw someone in the chat say they had a cold or flu today earlier. Um, but if you have a cold or flu, you wouldn't go to the hospital. Um, you might go to see your doctor in his doctor's office at the medical center or at the clinic. Um, but if you have something a little more serious, you might go to the hospital. Um, the doctor might send you to the hospital or you might go straight to the hospital to the emergency room. Okay, so the, um, just let me take care of something in chat here for a sec, folks. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, we'll put that person in timeout. So emergency room uh, is, let's say you hurt yourself, you broke your arm or you think it might be broken. Um, you wouldn't go to a medical center. You would go straight to the hospital and you would go to the emergency room. This is also where they would take you if the ambulance or air ambulance picked you up, they would take you straight to the emergency room uh, if, you hurt, if you hurt yourself. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, let me just check for a few more questions, folks. Um, so there was this doctor and physician. I think we did those three. Thank you for asking the questions this way. I know it's a little bit, um, a little bit different maybe than me answering them straight from the chat, but it works. 
So the next question is Papi Chulo. Hi, Papi. How are you? Um, what are the usual questions doctor ask you when you go for a checkup? So they're going to say things like, how have you been feeling the last few days? Are you running a fever? That means you're really hot and your temperature is really high. They might ask you about um, whether you've been eating. Do you have a stomach ache? Are you having trouble breathing? They'll probably listen to your heart and they'll listen to your lungs with a stethoscope. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, and they might uh, ask things about how your digestive system has been working. Have you been going to the bathroom normally? So that's a little bit of a, a strange question, but it helps them to get a sense of what's happening. Great question, Papi Chulo. Um, so we have a medical question from Kuo. I won't be able to answer this. What's the difference between hypertension and hypotension? I don't know. I'm, so I'm not a doctor. I don't know a lot of uh, differences between those things. Lolly has a question here. Uh, attending doctor or an attending a doctor and a practitioner, are they the same? So I don't know the exact answer, but what I will tell you is that um, there are things, there are people who are interns who are training to be doctors. Um, and I'm not sure, practitioner is another term for doctor. So you might want to look that one up. Um, but it's a pretty specific thing. Um, let's see here. Yuri says, concerning suffering once again, there's a book, All We Can Do Is Suffer the Pain. Uh, thank you for answering. So when you suffer something, that means that you just, it's just there and you have to just be okay with it. You have to just go through your day in pain and you just suffer the pain, but you don't let it stop you from doing things. So hopefully that makes uh, some sense there. Um, let's see here. Next question, a little bit morbid. Uh, English is fun says, what's the difference between die of or die from? So they are basically the same. So a person can die from cancer. A person can die of cancer. So you can use either. Um, it basically just helps you describe um, how someone has passed away. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, next one. Last question and we'll move on. How long, this is from Betul, hello Betul, how long does a student need to study at university to be a nurse or a doctor? So I think nurse is about three to four years. I think doctor is seven to 10 years. Um, and you'll have to look this up because it's different in different countries. Um, doctors definitely study longer, but they also study at the hospital while they are practicing and it's usually called an intern. So definitely longer uh, to be a doctor. Um, Lolly says, do you have a system like Obamacare in Canada? So in Canada, we have what's called universal health care. That means anyone who is a landed immigrant or citizen in Canada can go to the hospital and go to see the doctor. There's no charge. Um, you do have to pay for medicine, but you don't have to pay uh, to visit the doctor. There's no, uh, you don't have to pay any, am any amount of money uh, to do that. Uh, let's see here. Um, Move this person. Good stuff. Okay, next question. Bahar says, where'd that go? Let me click here. Bahar says, are there any private hospitals in your country? And if there are, what are the differences? So in Canada, there are no private hospitals. In the United States, there are private hospitals. Um, so in Canada, all of the hospitals are run by the government health agency. Um, and all the doctors basically work in that system. In the United States, there are private hospitals, um, and sometimes you can get faster healthcare in the United States. Sometimes when Canadians have to wait for a certain kind of healthcare in Canada, they will go to the United States and they will pay money uh, to get it done quicker. So uh, it's interesting. Um, I don't do that. I costs too much. One of the things the doctor is looking for when you go to visit him or her uh, is your symptoms. So this is a challenging word sometimes for English learners. I'll say it again. Symptoms. Symptoms. So you do say the P a little bit. Symptoms. So these are the symptoms of influenza. And the short version of influenza is the flu. So here we have uh, headache, fever, so that's high temperature, um, extreme tiredness in the muscles, aches and pains, 
vomiting, that means when you eat, but then it comes back up again. Not the nicest thing. Uh, coughing, like <coughs> uh, runny nose, you know when your nose is all runny. And sore throat, like, oh, I have to, I'm having trouble talking because my throat's sore. Uh, and aches. So a doctor is always looking for symptoms. Different diseases have different symptoms. And a doctor uses the symptoms to diagnose what is happening. So a doctor's job is to figure out what is happening to you. A doctor's job is to determine what illness or what medical problem you have. And they do that by looking at your symptoms and then using their, your symptoms to make uh, a diagnosis. Um, so um, a diagnosis is their conclusion or their uh, answer to what they think is happening to you. Once they have diagnosed you, once you have a diagnosis, did you hear the difference there? They start you on a treatment. So a treatment is the medicine that they would tell you to take in order to feel better. So a treatment um, is anything like an injection or a pill that you swallow. Um, maybe, they'll, maybe the treatment is they just tell you to exercise more. Um, sometimes they don't give you medicine. They just tell you to go home and relax, like take a day off work and just go home and sleep for a couple of days and you should feel better. So again, um, let's go through that one more time. A doctor looks for symptoms. They ask you questions about what's happening. From that, they come up with a diagnosis. So they connect the symptoms to what they think is happening to you. Uh, and then they will start you on a course of treatments or they will uh, prescribe a treatment, which is pills or medicine or something like that. Um, let me go over here one more time, see if there are a few more questions. Let me paste the link again. Um, so I see a question in the chat. Is this available to watch later? Yes, the live lessons become videos um, and you are able to watch them later. Let me just clean up my questions here. Um, I think I did that one. I did the hospital private questions. Um, Maria, this is a great question. So we would call this a personal question because it's about me. Maria says, did you have surgery recently? So a little over one year ago, I had heart surgery. So I had a valve in my heart that was not working properly. Um, and they uh, decided they needed to repair it. Um, so uh, right here, I have a scar because there was an incision and the doctor went in through the side and they repaired the valve in my heart. Um, so that's why last year in the summer, I didn't make any YouTube videos for you guys because I was recovering from surgery. I was recovering from heart surgery. That's a great question. Let's see here. Um, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this, but Count Liesold says, hello, can you tell us something about the pneumonia? Pneumonia is hard to say, eh? Um, looks like I just got poor connection there. Hopefully it reconnects. So pneumonia, the simplest uh, illnesses are a cold. So that's when you cough and your nose is stuffed up or the flu, which can be when your stomach hurts uh, or you're having uh, congestion where it's hard to breathe because your, your lungs have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of congestion in your lungs. I don't think that was a great explanation, um, but I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Um, some of the more serious illnesses are things like cancer. Uh, some people have heart disease. That's where your heart starts to, um, the heart muscle starts to wear out. Um, but I'm not a medical expert. So you're going to have to do a search uh, for some common diseases. Um, Papichulo, this is a great question. Um, Papichulo says, what's the difference between an inpatient and an outpatient? So at a hospital, if they admit you to the hospital and you stay overnight, you are an inpatient. If you go to the hospital and they put a cast on your arm and you go home, you are an outpatient. So that's the difference there, Pappy. Um, that's a good question because um, hospitals aren't just for people to stay over. Um, and then I'll do one more from 
Uh, DJ says, what's the difference between passed away and died? They are the same thing. So when you say someone passed away, it's a, it's a nicer way to say it, I guess. Um, I know it's just not nice when people die. So it's, uh, there is really no nice way to say it, I guess. Um, you might have an infection. So there are a lot of different kinds of infections. Um, and a doctor will generally, if you have an infection, will prescribe... Uh, when a doctor prescribes, it means they've uh, given you permission to buy a certain kind of drug. So they will probably prescribe antibiotics. Um, antibiotics come in pill form, uh, but sometimes antibiotics are given via uh, intravenous right into your arm. But usually uh, you get pills. Um, a doctor usually, when they come in, uh, he or she will have a stethoscope, and this is what they use to listen to your heart and listen to your lungs. So your heart pumps your blood, and your lungs are what you use to breathe. So when a doctor uses a stethoscope, they put this part on your chest, and they're able to hear um, how your heart is beating through the earpieces, uh, and they're able to hear whether your lungs are working properly. So a stethoscope is very useful for a doctor um, when they are trying to determine what is happening with you. Um, they might also take your blood pressure. So some of you who are older will probably recognize this. This is a newer one, but they put this strap on your arm. Uh, and then it, it constricts on your arm and it can check what your blood pressure is. This person's blood pressure is 146 over 134. I think the bottom number, I think this is a little bit high, but I think the bottom number is really high. So you don't want high blood pressure. Um, it's a common problem in North America um, because North Americans don't exercise enough. One of the best ways to reduce your blood pressure is to eat healthy, and to exercise a lot. So again, I'm not a doctor, but I know that those two things uh, are really, really good for you. Uh, let me paste the link for questions again. I think somebody's asking for it. Um, and let me see, this is from English is Fun. Question is, uh, do you pay when you see your dentist? Yes, so the doctor is free. The dentist costs money. That's a big difference in Canada. Um, the other thing a doctor or nurse will do is they will use a thermometer. This is a digital thermometer to take your temperature. So they'll put it under your tongue and they will use a thermometer to take your temperature because another way for uh, doctors and nurses to figure out what is wrong with you is to figure out what your temperature is. So you'll see here, um, this person's temperature is 36.2. That's in the normal range, maybe a little bit low, uh, and that's in Celsius. But they will use a thermometer to take your temperature. Uh, if your temperature is high, that means you have a fever. Okay, so a fever is when your body elevates its temperature to try to um, deal with an infection. Um, so you will have uh, a high temperature and uh, Sometimes that's just an indication that you have an infection. If you think that you broke a bone, they will usually give you an x-ray. I don't know if you can see this. It's the person's skeleton. You can see their bones. Um, so if you like trip playing a, a football game or maybe you were in a car accident and your arm um, just doesn't feel right, they might do an x-ray to see if you have broken a bone. Um, so x-rays are, um, you go to a special room uh, and you put your arm in a certain spot and they put a little um, machine comes down and it goes neep and then they can see the bones in your body. It's pretty cool actually uh, that they can do that. Um, let's see here. S this is not a medical question, but Sa Saif says, how do you think if I fully understand you now, what level is my English? So I always answer that by saying, your listening level is pretty good, but that doesn't mean you're reading, speaking, uh, and list, uh, sorry, it doesn't mean that your reading, writing, and speaking levels are high. So sometimes people can understand me because I speak a little slowly. Um, it means your English listening level is pretty good. Uh, that's what I would say there. 
Let's see. Next one. Noah says, how does a doctor help if you are dying from a disease? Usually they will give you medicine. So they might give you antibiotics. They might give you a different kind of medicine for that particular disease. Um, let's, uh, let's just say they give you whatever treatment you need. Once they look at your symptoms and they diagnose what they think is wrong with you, then they will give you medicine. Um, if you have cancer, you might have radiation therapy. You might have chemotherapy. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, though, because, again, I'm not a doctor and I don't want to make too many mistakes. Um, another way that doctors and nurses can have a look inside of you is something called an ultrasound. So this is most commonly used when people are pregnant. They will use an ultrasound to have a look at the baby in the mother's womb. I'll type womb. Womb is a hard word. So the womb is where a baby grows inside of a woman. Um, and they will use an ultrasound to look at the baby as the baby is growing for nine months in the mother's womb. They also use ultrasounds to look at people's hearts. So I had a few ultrasounds in the last couple of years uh, as doctors were trying to diagnose what was wrong with my heart. I actually just had one last Tuesday because as a follow-up, they want to have a good look at my heart again using an ultrasound machine. So this uses sound waves to create a picture of something on the inside of your body. Um, let me post the link for questions again, just so that people have them. Um, there's the link. I see someone asking for that. Um, let's see here. Um, I'll delete that one. Sorry, folks, just grabbing the next question. And it's not a medical question. Let's try to do <laughs> Carlos Gomez says, why can I understand you almost 100% and many professors on YouTube? And when sometime I listen to a real conversation of a native speaker, I don't get it almost anything. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because I'm the only person talking and I can control the speed that I talk at and make it easier for you to understand. Um, when native speakers start to have conversations, we speed up. We use a lot more short forms. So my plan is, if you've watched the Saturday evening live lessons, my plan is to eventually have another person come on the live stream on Saturday night with me, and you'll hear a real conversation. And that would be a great challenge, I think, for some of you. Um, Pappy Chulo asks about diagnosis and prognosis. I don't know the difference, Pappy, so I'm going to just leave that question. Um, the next one is from Busicorn. Hi, Busicorn. How long have you waited when going to the hospital in Canada? So it depends on what's happening. So if you go to the emergency room and you have problems with your heart, you see a doctor almost immediately. You don't wait at all. But I've gone to the waiting room with my daughter who was just feeling sick and had a fever and we waited three hours, okay? So it can depend, it really can depend. Um, let's see here. Um, next question, Lolly. This is a great question. So Lolly says, when and how do you use the verb undergo? So you undergo surgery, okay? So I underwent heart surgery a year ago. Isn't that a weird word? Um, underwent. <laughs> so undergo is to have a surgery. So you undergo a surgery. And then uh, when you speak in the past tense, you say that you underwent. So if you had heart surgery, you would say that you... Uh, you are going to undergo surgery in the future, or if you're going to have heart surgery, sorry. Um, Pedro says, how do you get a doctor to help if you're dying? Just go see a doctor, Pedro, and hopefully they will give you medicine that will help you. Um, let me clean up my questions here. Let's see, Miroslav, hi Miroslav. Um, so Miroslav says, what do you think, how important, how important is it to have a good connection, understanding with your doctor. Sometimes it's not easy, especially if we have to visit a psychiatrist for some help. So there's different kinds of healthcare, different kinds of medicine. Some take care of your physical problems, but sometimes you have problems with how you think and how you feel. And so you'll visit a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I don't have a lot of expertise in that area, but Miroslav, to answer your question, I would say whether you are having physical problems or whether you are having mental problems, it's very important that you trust your doctor. So hopefully you have a good 
relationship. I think that's why in Canada we start by seeing our family doctor because it's someone who knows you a little bit, um, who has been your doctor for a long time. Let's see. Um, I'm only going to answer medical questions, people, um, just so that we can stay on track. Eliza says, hi, Bob. Can you speak about IV? Would the doctor say you need to get an IV? Is it correct? And what would be the correct passive sentence? Um, so you could say, like, when I was in the hospital, I got an IV in my arm. That's where they put a needle in your arm. I am actually going to talk about it in a sec. So let's wait. Maybe let's wait for that slide, because I think it's coming up. Um, the other thing a doctor or nurse might do is they might want to know your weight, <laughs> like how heavy you are. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> maybe, I, maybe I have a cough. I need to go see the doctor. <laughs> I'm just having a drink. <clears throat> Uh, clear my throat a little bit. I'm not sick, but uh, sometimes it can help a doctor or nurse to figure out what's happening if they know your weight and your height, because if they know that you're overweight, that could be contributing to whatever disease you have. So if you have diabetes, sometimes that is um, caused or related to being overweight. Um, sometimes they like to know your weight and height so they can figure out what your normal weight should be. Um, something that happens in order to not get sick is called a vaccination. In Canada, kids get vaccinated a number of times as they're growing up so that they will be immune. I'll put that in the chat. Immune. When you are immune, then you can't get a certain disease. So a vaccine is something they put in your uh, body with a needle. I don't like needles. <laughs> I should have warned you. Careful, needle picture coming up. Um, but you might go and get a vaccination so that you don't get sick. Uh, in Canada, we vaccinate against measles, mumps, uh, rubella, um, even the flu. You can get a vaccine uh, for the flu. So you saw in the previous picture, um, there was someone getting a needle. So this is the needle. The sharp part here is the needle. This part is actually called a syringe. It's kind of hard to say. This is the needle. This is the syringe. This is what a doctor or nurse will use to give you an injection. Actually, I have that right here. So we would call that an injection. So this person is getting vaccinated and they're getting an injection in order to do that. So again, this is the needle, this is the syringe, uh, and a doctor or nurse would use this to give you an injection. I was gonna say something else about that. In English, we often just say, the doctor gave me a needle, or the nurse gave me a needle. Oh, I went to the hospital, um, they said I needed to, to get some antibiotics, and they actually just gave me a needle right there in the doctor's office. So when you say that you got a needle, it means they actually stuck it in you uh, and you got a needle. Uh, let me see, uh, answer a couple more questions here. Uh, Maria Ciprian says, hello, Bob, what's the difference between healthcare and health and safety? So healthcare is the care of your body in terms of diseases or if you've hurt yourself, but health and safety is in a place of work there's usually people in charge of health and safety, and their job is to make the workplace safe for people. Their job is to make sure that people um, are safe and don't get hurt in the workplace. Um, okay, I'm gonna finish these off, and then I'll take a few more questions. Sometimes the doctor or nurse will ask to do a blood test. So you can see, I had a lot of blood tests last year, by the way. Um, they put a needle in and they take blood out of you. And then the blood goes to what we call a lab or laboratory. I think some people say laboratory, maybe in Britain, but we say laboratory. Um, so your blood, um, a blood test blood is taken or drawn. They might draw blood uh, and they'll send the blood to a laboratory. Uh, and then the doctor within a few hours uh, will get some results. And, uh, and then hopefully they can use that to help determine uh, what is wrong with you. We ha also have something called your vitals or your vital signs. So this is a collection of information that helps them know how you are feeling. And generally it is this, it's blood pressure. This machine does blood pressure. It's checking how much 
how much oxygen is in your blood and your pulse, which is how many times per minute your heart is beating. So your vital signs, sometimes in the hospital, you'll be hooked up to a machine that keeps track of your vitals or your vital signs. So it will check your blood pressure every 15 minutes. It will monitor how much oxygen is in your blood because when we breathe, we get oxygen in our blood and that's what lets us um, live basically. Uh, and it checks how many beats per minute your heart is beating. That's called your, uh, your vitals. So intravenous. So you've probably seen these bags hanging from a pole and then there's a, a little hose, just I'll call it a hose, I don't know the medical term, and then a needle goes into your arm. This is called an IV, that's the short form. So you could say, oh, they put me on an IV or uh, I needed some, I needed intravenous. Um, so this is when they wanna put something straight into your blood. So they would hook up an IV um, and uh, that's how we would describe it. They, oh, they put me on an IV or um, they put me on a drip. Sometimes they say that, but this is, generally this is an intravenous method for doctors to get medicine straight into your bloodstream. It's a quick way uh, to get things uh, into you if you need them, like antibiotics or just uh, fluids. Sometimes they'll put fluids or painkillers, something to make you feel less pain as well. Um, let's see here, bandage. This is the simpler way to fix something. Uh, when you hurt yourself, uh, you put a bandage on it. So if you have a little cut or scrape, sometimes you put a bandage on it. Little kids put bandages on when they have an owie. So when in English we say ow when we hurt ourselves and little kids sometimes when they hurt themselves, they say that they have an owie and then they'll put a bandage on it. So this is a lot simpler than an IV. <laughs> Um, sometimes when you break a bone, uh, well not sometimes, if you break a bone, they put a cast on you. So you can see this person has a cast. I think they used to be made out of plaster. I'm not sure what they're made out of now, but a cast is what you get um, if you break a bone. I've had a cast once in my life. I think I broke this wrist when I was a kid a long time ago. Sometimes you have a, a deep cut or wound uh, and you need stitches. So this is when they take thread and a different kind of needle, a sewing needle, and they put stitches in. So I, I'm not sure you wanna look at this. I know this is, makes, some people don't like seeing things like this, but this person hurt themselves and so they needed stitches and so they have stitches in. Uh, there's a Shawn Mendes song. Doesn't he sing about stitches sometimes? Um, if you hurt one of your legs, oftentimes the doctor will give you crutches. So these are called crutches. You can see that he has two crutches and this lets you use your arms to help you walk when you have hurt your foot or leg or knee, etc., etc. So sometimes you get crutches. Uh, sometimes you go to the hospital and you get admitted. So we talked about inpatients and outpatients earlier. Uh, an inpatient is someone who has been admitted to the hospital. That means you went to the hospital and when they diagnosed your symptoms, the treatment required that you stay at the hospital. And so you have been admitted to the hospital. You're gonna stay overnight if you've been admitted. They will put you in a hospital bed, which is a special kind of bed where the head and legs can go up and down. This helps the doctors and nurses to get you in and out of bed if you're having trouble. But uh, this is not the kind of bed that you would have in your home, but uh, this is a hospital bed, a special kind of bed. They will put you in a hospital room. I know it's a simple term, but that's what we would call it. A hospital room is the place where you would stay if you are admitted to the hospital. You would get a hospital bed. Usually there's a chair for people to visit you at the hospital. Uh, you might be in a ward. So a ward is where there is more than one person in the hospital room. So depending on, uh, you can actually, so I said healthcare was free in Canada, but you can actually pay uh, to have a private room 
instead of being in a ward. So generally you will end up, if you are admitted to the hospital, you'll end up in a ward. But if you have in health insurance or money, you can pay to be in a private room, okay? Oh, this one was supposed to be earlier. Sometimes if crutches don't work, they put you in a wheelchair. Um, so you might be in a wheelchair for a little bit because you have hurt your legs. Maybe you broke your leg and you need to be in a wheelchair. When you have a baby, I have five by the way, five kids. Um, when you have a baby, you go to the maternity ward. This is a special part of the hospital uh, where women go to have babies. So a maternity ward is a special wing of the hospital or a special floor of the hospital that's dedicated, um, that specializes in delivering babies. So uh, when a woman feels like it's time for the baby to come and they drive to the hospital, carefully and maybe too quickly, uh, usually they end up in the maternity ward uh, and they deliver the baby in the maternity ward. That's how we describe having a baby in Canada. We say that the mom delivers the baby. <laughs> it's kind of a funny way to describe it. Um, sometimes the doctor will give you antibiotics, but sometimes they'll just give you an ointment or a cream. If you have a rash on your arm or something, they might give you an ointment or a cream. This is a little bit of a challenge, ointment or cream. Sometimes if you are having problems with your eyes or ears, they will give you eye drops or ear drops. Um, so those are two things that you might, if, let's say your eyes, you have a problem with your eye or you're, you're having a trouble with your ear, they might give you eye drops or ear drops. And when the doctor tells you that you need a certain medicine, they will give you a prescription so this is a note from the doctor for the pharmacy so that they know they have permission to give you a certain drug. So the doctor um, is the one who decides if you can buy a certain drug and they do that by writing a prescription. So if you go to the doctor and he determines that you need antibiotics, he will write a prescription for you or she will write a prescription for you and you will go to the pharmacy which is in Canada where we buy our drugs. And then the pharmacist will know that the doctor said you had permission to use that drug. So anyways, that is all of the slides. I'm just gonna look at a few questions, um, but I do wanna get this wrapped up because I know the lessons have been going a little long lately. Uh, hopefully that's okay with you guys. Um, sorry, the lesson is so long. Let's do some questions. <laughs> So I'll look at a few questions now, guys, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Magnum says, oh, this talks about exactly what we just did. Uh, Magnum says, when you get a prescription from a doctor, do you need to leave it at the pharmacy? So you take the written note to the pharmacy. The doctor actually sends it via computer now as well. Uh, and then you wait at the pharmacy. And then when they have your drugs ready, they call you up and then you go and pick them up. Um, let's see here. Um, what's the difference between healthcare and health and safety? I think we did that when I was 28. This is from Rachel Ting. When I was 28, my doctor told me that I had cancer, but I'm okay now. And this year I'm 42 years old and still alive. That's amazing, Rachel. I'm very happy to hear that. Cancer is a very, very serious uh, thing to have. Uh, next question. Kazoyo Yamashita says, in Canada, do elderly people often go to the hospital? Yes, as you get older, um, your body, we say, your body starts to fall apart. It doesn't really fall apart, um, but older people uh, definitely uh, go to the hospital probably more and probably see the doctor more. Mohammed uh, from Malaysia says, in my hometown, alternative treatment is another option to get treatment. How about in your country? Yes, yeah, so we have a lot of alternative medicine. So we have naturopaths, uh, people who teach you how to eat right uh, according to your body. So there are, there is alternative medicine, definitely. Uh, you can go for acupuncture um, and those kinds of things as well. Um, let's see. Um, how he says, oh, how says, hi, Bob. What's the word for describing an uncurable disease? So sometimes we say people have a terminal disease, a terminal disease. Um, like you can have terminal cancer, which means that there is, they're not going to be able to cure it. Um, but you can just say uncurable too. Uh, let's see here. Next one is, 
Why do job sites look for dentists so much? Are there not very many dentists in Canada? There's a lot of dentists, but people like having straight teeth and good teeth, so they're probably willing uh, to pay money for that. Uh, next question. Hi, Yuki says, what's the difference between surgery and an operation? They are the same thing. So I had an operation last year. I had heart surgery. You would not say a heart operation. You would say I had heart surgery. Um, but generally when we describe um, when a surgeon operates on you, we call it an operation. Great question. Let's see here. Next question is, Hoseman says, hi, Bob. Greetings from Honduras. Hello. Um, could you tell the difference between pain, sore, tenderness, and aches? Thanks in advance. So they're all very similar. Um, pain is something best described as, you know, when you, when you hit yourself hard or when you burn yourself, you have pain. Um, whereas tenderness is where, you know, when you touch it, it's sore kind of thing. Uh, and then let's see here. And aches are just, it just kind of hurts a little bit all the time. Like uh, as you get old, your back aches. Like you just kind of always have uh, an ache in your back. Let's see. Oh, Papi Chulo wants to know for some medical abbreviations. Papi, I don't really know uh, that many of them. I'm going to skip that question. Leo says, what's the difference between illness and disease? So uh, I think they're fairly similar. Like if I have an illness, um, let's see, an illness would be like if I have a cold, I guess we would call that an illness. Um, you're going to need to look that one up. I don't know. I think the difference is very slight. I don't think I'm the best person to answer it. So let's see here. Vinicius has some definitions for us. Thanks, Vinicius. These definitions would help. A diagnosis is based on actual facts or symptoms. A prognosis is based on actual facts to predict future symptoms. That's cool. Thanks, Vinicius. A little bit of medical advice there for us. Um, so Luis says, what's the difference between sick and disease? So I would tell a doctor that I feel sick or I would say that I am sick. You don't have to know exactly what is going wrong to say that you're sick, um, but you would just say I'm sick. But a disease is a specific kind of sickness. That's how I would say it. Um, let's see here. Question from... Jay Young says, hi, Bob. Thanks for the great videos. Can you tell us about good things and bad things about the Canadian healthcare system that you can think of? So good thing, number one good thing is anyone can go and get treatment, okay? It's free. Bad thing is sometimes you need to wait a long time depending on what is wrong with you. And the other thing is uh, I think sometimes when people need something done quickly, um, and when they're waiting, they, it's not an enjoyable time. So mentally, it's stressful uh, to wait for treatment. Let's see here. Oh, this is a good question too. Uh, Mauricio says, actually, we should only address the vocative doctor to whom holds a doctorate degree. We commonly call them like that out of respect formality. Did I get it right? So there's two kinds of doctors in Canada. There are medical doctors. So that's a doctor who's trained to take care of people. But when you go to university, you do your undergrad, which is four years, then you can do a master's degree, and then you can do a doctorate. But you can be a doctor of philosophy. You can be a doctor in almost any field, but it doesn't mean that you can take care of people. So there's two kinds of doctors in English. That was a great, uh, great point. Let's see. This is from Fabio. So is, is physician too formal and less spoken word? Is doctor also used to address the person who has a doctor degree? Yeah, so kind of the same thing. We don't use physician very much. Uh, we use it like I needed to see my physician, right? Um, but we usually use doctor. Almost, I would say 90% of the time uh, we use doctor. So Rinky Sandy says, what's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? Well, I can tell you what's the same. Both words are really hard to pronounce for people learning English, um, but I don't know the difference. I do know that they are both people who take care um, of people who um, are having challenges uh, mentally, who are having trouble uh, getting through their day uh, because of how their brain is functioning. Uh, let's see here. Next question. 
Giselle says, what's the difference between medication and medicine? They are the same. So this morning I took my medicine or this morning I took my medication. You could use both words the same. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why we have two words for that. Miroslav says, because we are not native speakers, it's more difficult to explain to the doctor the reason for our visit. What is the case in Canada? Are there enough patients? Are they, are they patient with patients? That's a great question. I think they are. What we highly recommend in Canada is if you are having health problems and you're going to see a doctor, that you should take a family member with who speaks really good English if you have trouble speaking English with the doctor. Uh, and another thing, don't be afraid of the doctors. Uh, just remember that they're there to help you uh, and they should be very patient with their patients. Hopefully you got that little, little bit of uh, fun English there. So, Hyde says, what's the meaning of an OTC drug? So an over-the-counter drug is a drug you can buy without permission from your doctor. You do not need a prescription to buy an over-the-counter drug. So that would be something simple like cough medicine uh, for something simple. Um, so again, this field, does the doctor, you do need. So Rami says, um, let's see here. I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go. Sorry, Rami Salib says, does the doctor profession require the highest grades in high school to get into this field or the highest marks? You need really, really good grades. You need really, really good marks. So uh, grades and marks we use to, that's the score you get when you're in high school and university. In order to be a doctor, you need to be really, really smart. Um, let's see here. Um, to do this one. And this is the last question. I know I missed some of the questions. I'm sorry about that. But I'm trying to keep this live lesson to be exactly one hour. Maria Cyprian says, Bob, is there a strong resemblance between drug and medicine? So we refer to drugs as medicine. And uh, we refer to medicine as drugs. So you could say something like, oh, the doctor has me on a couple drugs for my heart or the doctor has me on a couple different medicines or has me on a couple different medications. We would generally use medication, like the doctor prescribed some medication for me. Um, but the, the informal uh, way of saying it would just be drugs. Like, ah, I'm on three drugs because I have heart, I'm not by the way, I'm on one drug, <laughs> just so you know. Um, I see that there are a lot of questions in the chat. Let's do one more round. Um, oh, we have someone, Eliza is helping here, excellent. So Eliza says, psychiatrists deal with stresses, depressions, and nervous breakdowns. Psychiatrists deal with mental diseases. So that's a little bit of a distinction for you. Thank you very much, Eliza, for, uh, for helping out there. I love it when people help out in the chat. Um, I'm gonna post the link for questions one more time. We have three more minutes, folks, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, so I see questions in uh, the chat, try to use the form. That's very, very helpful. Um, and again, I am not a doctor or medical professional. I'm here to help you with English. So if I make small mistakes uh, as I'm teaching you, uh, please use this more for pronunciation practice. Um, and it's also good um, if I did say anything a little bit wrong, that's great for your brain because you can think about, oh, I think Bob was wrong. I think medicines and drugs are different and here's how they're different. Um, but I don't see any more questions coming in folks. So if you do have a question, uh, please ask it using that link. I have just a couple more minutes to help you guys with your English. Uh, while we're waiting, don't forget to subscribe with that red button below. I really like it when people subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Um, and don't forget if you had trouble understanding some of this video, it will be available with subtitles tomorrow. So you can watch this again, maybe while you're cooking dinner, you can put this video on and listen to it one more time. Um, and then uh, also, uh, I was gonna say something else, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, yes, um, there will be no live lesson tomorrow night. No live tomorrow night. I am taking the night off. Sorry, I know you are disappointed, but there will be a new English lesson video tomorrow. So normally I do a live lesson on Saturday nights at 7.15 p.m. Um, there will be a new video tomorrow instead. I'm 
a little bit busy tomorrow night, so I can't do a live. So I'm going to make a short English lesson video today and I will put it up tomorrow evening at the same time as the live. Um, anyways, let me just check. No last questions. So let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thanks for coming. Don't forget, you can watch this again tomorrow. There will be subtitles at the bottom. Always a great idea. And uh, thanks for coming. I uh, just want to say bye to everyone in the chat. Hi, Uu in the chat. Thanks again for coming to watch. Hi, Grace, Antonio, Vinicius. You guys are the best. Uh, Robson is there. Huri, Clive is here again. Hi, Clive. How are you? A lot of familiar names, a lot of new names. Zimming, Shakir, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope that this lesson was helpful for you. Um, and again, remember that the medical world is huge. I just took a little, little look at it for you. Uh, hopefully, this helps you if you did need to go see a doctor uh, and to be able to speak English uh, just a little bit with them. Uh, thanks again for watching. You guys, you people, you people are awesome. I hope you learned a lot of English. Have a good weekend. New video tomorrow. No live lesson tomorrow night. I'm a little busy tomorrow. I actually have an event tomorrow, so that's, uh, that's what's keeping me busy. So again, thank you so much for watching. Um, I should push this stop button now. I'm pushing